Right, here's some guidance to help you prepare for your English Algangsprower. Um, it's part one of two films I'm going to do, and it's called 28 Important Rules. And rule number one is know your texts. Know the, the basic plots about them, know the main characters in them, know how they relate to other things and other texts that you've done. Number two, at the very start, there are, there are so many times I hear people say, I chose or I have choosed or something wrong this topic because. So, I have chosen or I chose. Don't mess up the first sentence of your presentation. Number three, know your texts. Number four. Right, often I hear people say that they chose the subject because they've got a personal interest in it. Um, and then it turns out that they haven't. So I'll hear, uh, oh, I chose to talk about the Nazis because I have a personal interest in the Nazis. And then you're thinking, really? Well, what is that personal interest? And there's no personal interest. It's just something that they thought it was interesting to talk about. So don't say you've got a personal interest in it if you haven't really got a personal interest in it. Number five. Know your texts. Very important. Number six. Yeah, Danish. I always hear um, Danish when people are trying to think. They can't quite get the words in English, so they, they come up with uh, things in Danish that they're muttering to yourself. If you're going to mutter to yourself like a, a mad person, do it in English. Number seven, know your texts. Number eight, yeah, try to present a balanced argument and not just a list of facts. So I don't want to hear um, the history of uh, postage stamps from uh, 1800 to 2014 with a list of things that happened in different years. Um, I want something that's more like a balanced argument. So some people believe in God, but on the other hand, some people think that religion is a load of nonsense. On the other hand, is a good idiom, by the way. But that's what I want. Not, not just fact after fact after fact telling me about something. I want something that's more of a, a balanced argument. Number nine, it's very important that you know your texts. Number ten. Yeah, link what you're saying to the work we did in class, of course. And there are some good phrases that you can use to link things. Um, it's a bit like a text we read in class that you tell them about. It reminds me of a song we looked at. We did a similar thing called M -m -m -m. Um, Another thing we read in class with the same theme was, or I'd like to refer to whatever it is. All sorts of phrases you can think of uh, that, that do the same job, not just those ones there. Number 11, know your texts. Number 12, practice it with a friend. Get the timing right. Be honest with each other. Pick out each other's mistakes. Because, you know, I'm not allowed to do a practice um, of your presentation with you, but you can practice it with each other for as long as you like. And it helps you to get used to the pressure of the situation. It's amazing. How often I see people come into an exam and it's like they've never said the words before in their life and they dry up after 90 seconds. Get it right, time it, be prepared. Number 13. Yeah. Number 14. Let it flow. Yeah, try to make it sound like you're telling a friend about something you're interested in rather than sounding like you are reading a script that you have memorized. Something I often see again, people have just remembered the five minutes word for word and, you know, they fill the time, but it just sounds so unnatural. It should uh, flow more. It should be structured around the bullet points that you've written in your disposition and you know, if you do it 10 times, it may not be the, the same thing any one of the 10 times that you do it. Um, but then it will certainly sound more natural than just a 
memorized five minute script. So keep it natural, let it flow. Number 15. Know your texts. Number 16. Get the word order, order right. So this is something that people do wrong a lot in Danish because it's slightly different for um, subordinate clauses, uh, B, B setninger, in Danish compared to English. So don't say, some people say that you not should drink because the correct word or order is some people say that you should not drink or shouldn't drink. Okay, so where you have that kind of a sentence with uh, with a second clause um, with a verb in it, get the word order right. Number 17. Know your text. Number 18. In both parts of the exam, talk about the texts you have read. Um, so for the first part, the uh, specific text that you looked at, I'd like to hear what you looked at. Um, I've heard quite a lot of people talking about the subject, but never really relating it to the stuff they read. And the same in the uh, second part of the exam, talk about the text that we've read throughout the year in class. Relate what comes up to those texts. Number 19. Know your text. Number 20. Yeah, if you hear a mistake that you've made, um, correct it. Um, and that's actually an impressive thing. If we can see examining you uh, that you can hear you've made a mistake, um, then that that's in your favour. So if you if you know you've made a mistake, don't just let it drop and hope that we don't notice it, because of course I will notice it. But if you correct it, then that will be plus points for you. 21. Know your texts. 22. Yeah, take control and seize the initiative in both parts of the exam. Obviously, the first five minutes is supposed to be just you talking. Um, but even in the second bit, that's supposed to be more con um, conversational. If you're taking control of that and doing most of the talking, then um, that's in your favour as well. It's uh, you, you often get this uncomfortable situation where the the censor and the teacher uh, are trying to push the pupil for something to say, and they're asking them questions, and all they do is say yes, no, and give short answers. It's, it's very important to take control of the whole thing and let it run at your pace. Number 23, know your text. Number 24, oh, know your texts again. Number 25, idioms. Idioms are good, but they need to sound natural. Idioms like, it cost an arm and a leg if something was very expensive. Idioms like... It was six of one and half a dozen of the other, if something is two people's faults. Um, you know, they, they were in a fight, and was it his fault or was it his fault? Well, it was six of one and half a dozen of the other. The point being that half a dozen and six are the same thing. I, idioms like, I was over the moon when England won the World Cup, as if that, that's ever going to happen. Um, idioms like, I'm feeling a bit under the weather today, I'm not very well. Idioms like... Oh, he could. The referee in that football match was blind as a bat. He missed everything. He didn't see anything at all. Idioms like, she was the apple of his eye. He absolutely loved her. Idioms like, he's got in his head in the clouds. He's not thinking. He's, he's got no idea. He's just, um, he's just daydreaming. If, he, if somebody's got their head in the clouds, they're daydreaming. Somebody is as sick as a parrot. I was as sick as a parrot when Italy beat England 2-1 in the football. Don't use it's raining cats and dogs. You hear it all the time. Nobody really says it. Number 26. That one. Number 27. Yeah, I hear this a lot. Um, people not knowing the difference between a simple and a continuous form of a verb. So, I speak English, 
I'm, I'm come from England, so I speak English generally, but I am speaking English to you because I'm doing it right now. So I, I, last week I heard something like um, the Amish are a group of people who are living in a very old fashioned way. Well, we don't know that that's what they're doing right now because, you know, right now they might be having a day off and watching the television. So that sentence needs to say the Amish are a group of people who live in a very old fashioned way because that's what they do generally. Number 28, know your texts. <laughs> 